will provide us an overview about vicinity. Later, Victor Olavez from Bavenir will provide a technical presentation about the open call technical requirements. And to finalize, I will provide an overview about administrative issues. We will open question and answer slots in which you can ask questions using a Slido. We will try to answer the question if we are not able to answer this question during the webinar. Do not worry because we will answer the question in the session Q&A of the website. First of all, I would like to show you the logistic of this uh, webinar. First, I should inform you that this webinar will be recorded. I hope everybody agree on this. Uh, slides and video will be available on vicinity after the webinar on the vicinity web page. As I say, we are going to use Slido for question and answer and polls. Please, uh, uh, I, will, I will show you how to connect to Slido. Okay. Go to the Slido web, web page, slide dot and the do, and introduce the event code in this um, in this uh, text box as I explain the test the code is K154. I have to remind you that our your microphones are muted. Okay. And after this, I would like to give the floor to our project coordinator, Professor Christopher Green from the University of Kaiser Lauten. In the meantime, uh, uh, Christoph is going to share his screen. Uh, we will put a, a pool uh, regarding the domain of your IoT infrastructure in a Slido. Please answer this, uh, this poll. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Okay. okay, Christoph, you can. Okay, uh, just in case it doesn't work, uh, I got a strange message here. Okay, I, I will try again. Okay. Yeah, let's see. You see the screen now? You should. I hope so. Yep. Uh, and here we go. I hope you see my screen now and you hear me. Yes. Yes, yes good. That's then let's start. Um, I am the coordinator of the Vicinity 2020 project. I'm professor at the uh, Kaiserslautern University of Technology. I will give you a five or ten minute introduction into Vicinity and uh, what we expect and when we expect in the open course. Very brief, we will later on come to details. I will start with the challenges and objectives of the Vicinity project. If you look at IoT use cases, there is a vast amount of IoT use cases, but the problem is that for every domain, there has been established a separate um, infrastructure and um, um, platforms that are very specific for, let's say, e-health or other domains. The problem is interoperability. Vicinity's vision is to provide interoperability as a service, not yet another standard. We want to create an open platform for domain crossing and value-added services that use multiple infrastructures from different disciplines to create new services. To achieve this objective or to fulfill this vision, we are building and demonstrating a bottom-up, user-driven, decentralized, extensible platform ecosystem. The idea is to have something that is like a social network for things. 
that enables the creation of domain crossing value added services. The interesting thing is, uh, is that we want to um, enable that the users can share the access to their smart object, to their infrastructures, without losing the control over them. So that they share the data or the control over their things only with a very limited number of friends, but not with a company in the cloud that then can, like Facebook, um, do whatever it wants with it. On top of this, innovative cross-domain services can be installed and, of course, we want new business models to be established in the end. More technically, I will give you now an overview of the Vicinity project. The Vicinity project is a research and innovation action project with 7.5 million funding from the European Commission. Among this funding, we have 500,000 euros reserved for open calls. The Vicinity project um, consists of um, 15 partners that you, uh, whose logos are shown here in the lower part of the slide. A particularity of the project compared with other projects um, in Horizon 2020 is the duration. Vicinity has a duration of 48 months, that is four years. Within this time frame, we have two open calls that are compared with the other EPI projects a bit delayed. So we are the last project in this call to um, launch its open calls. Vicinity is implemented within 10 work packages. We started with a requirement specification architecture definition in work package one, investigation of standards and platforms in work package two, and are now um, nearly finished with the server and client implementation in work package three and four, and have already implemented or started implementation of value added services. We also started the integration and lab testing and are going to deploy um, the things and the infrastructures to pilot installations. Really technically, the vicinity architecture is um, a cloud architecture, uh, not a cloud, um, um, an edge architecture of edge computing. In the cloud, we have a vicinity cloud gateway that allows registration where you can share your friends, where you can uh, declare services that you want to use. The data remains at the um, user's location. On the lower part of the slide, you see user one, user two, user n plus one. And here we have, for example, um, devices and data that can be accessed via an IoT gateway, for example. And the users share their data only in a peer-to-peer -peer way, only with its friends, not with everybody. And at the right, lower right side, you see how this um, is happening. To integrate new infrastructures, we need a small adapter, that is a small piece of software that um, creates an interface with the vicinity gateway and with, and with the peer-to-peer -peer network. That is a piece of software that can be quickly written and for which we have a lot of templates. Below this adapter, we can create new infrastructures that can be bridges, that can be whatever you like, that can then be integrated in the vicinity cloud. Let's have a quick overview of the timing. We started over two years ago. We had the first reviews, we had um, um, the first important milestones, we have the semantic model available since March 20, and now we are here, if you look, 15, uh, 15th of March plus three minute, uh, months, we, are, uh, we have just opened the call where we expect contributions on new infrastructures that shall be integrated in the vicinity project. In a few months, we will have the server and client and components ready. That is going to happen in month 30, that is in this summer. So before the call, uh, open call finishes, we will have client and server components ready to use. Later this year, we will have a second call on new value-added services as well.
That's it from my side. Carmen, I give control back to you. Okay, thank you, uh, Christoph, for your, for your presentation. I have to say that um, we are going to have another poll open um, right now. Uh, from one side, I would like to give the floor to Victor Orabek and remind you that you have to uh, provide your question in Slido because all of you are muted. Okay, uh, then Victor, you can start your presentation. Good afternoon. I hope you can hear me. Yes, uh, Victor, we can hear you. And I can, uh, I, you see my screen, I hope. Yes, we are now seeing your screen. Okay, perfect. So uh, I would like to invite you as well on, uh, on this first open call of Project Vicinity. Uh, my goal is to present you technical details for, uh, for the applicants. And um, uh, what do you need to imp uh, what do you need to implement uh, when um, when the applicants build the win the uh, win the open call? That's very really simple. Um, let me I will show you a different more a more complicated slide as Christoph showed you as a basic architecture. Uh, this is more inside view of uh, of the vicinity um, uh, vicinity logical principle architecture when we, for example, in this case, we have two uh, ecosystems or infrastructures uh, uh, integrated uh, together, and they're integrated together through the vicinity. So on the left side, we have some uh, uh, building infrastructure, which is the blue boxes. They have some devices, appliances connected, uh, uh, car or, or whatsoever. On the right side, you have an energy ecosystem for um, energy, um, um, uh, some PVs, uh, wind turbines, or even uh, batteries. Both of the, these infrastructures are integrated to, uh, together uh, to the vicinity through the vicinity adapter. Those are the blue and orange boxes here, a small piece of software which, interest, uh, which translates or integrates your internals, or I would say that the vicinity uh, uh, functionality into your internal uh, internal uh, infrastructure, and all these uh, informations, uh, all these ecosystems are connected together through the in a, into peer-to-peer -peer network, which is uh, which is set up by the in the middle component, which is called the vicinity neighborhood manager currently, which sets up the edges of, uh, of the P2P network, the social edges of the P2P network, so you can still keep the control of, um, of every device you are sharing uh, with the other partners in the other ecosystems. And if it is working and integrated correctly, uh, you can see that finally you can, you can reuse, the, you can get access, I would say, of the in, uh, components or the infrastructure devices or even services of the other partners from the other infrastructure. For example, uh, here on the right side we have an energy ecosystem and thanks to the vicinity this energy ecosystem can have uh, access to the load consumption of uh, or the consumption of, uh, of the building appliances or even to have uh, access to the energy storage etc. We will create, uh, the vicinity enables us to create such an agent, uh, such a peer to peer network. So, connecting these edges. And thanks to the connection of the social uh, uh, interoperator, we can create value added services on the top of that, where um, we can have a cross domain value added services, uh, which I guess is the content of the second open call. I will focus on the integration of the infrastructure. So, this is the basic the, the concept. This concept needs to be, um, this small vicinity adapter, I would say so, needs to be implemented by everyone who would like to join their ecosystem into, uh, into, uh, into the vicinity. Uh, it is the same job uh, will the applicants do here, the same job will needs to do every, um, uh, uh, every ecosystem joining the vicinity, even outside of the open call, in the future, in the community, etc. Uh, the question is technically how to integrate um, uh, how to integrate uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, 
ecosystems in, uh, in the vicinity. Usually, in our experience from uh, already integrated infrastructures, we have two options. Oh, there are several options, but the mostly people are using, uh, choosing these two options. The first one is the cloud integration. That means the vicinity uh, vicinity is providing a service specific uh, specific uh, gateway services, which can be used by the cloud services of integrated ecosystem. Advice: If uh, usually when uh, when uh, the uh, your IoT or the, uh, you already have some uh, cloud services applications and um, created uh, um, uh, already in your solution, then it is wise to uh, to connect on one point to vicinity to the cloud services. However, in particular, uh, particular solutions, can, uh, the approach can be different. For example, they do not have some one big cloud infrastructure, but usually the infrastructure is scarce through the, um, uh, through the uh, clients, uh, uh, clients, for the clients' households, for example. If I have a water heater, which is already connected uh, through the Bluetooth to, to, my, uh, to the smartphone in a household, I can leverage this small part of the infrastructure and put in the, for example, in a, a close to the water heater uh, or inside the water heater, if it is running, for example, some parts of, uh, in the Raspberry Pi, I can run the, directly the connect, uh, connection point to the vicinity directly at the level of the water heater. This is the decision which needs to be taken by the, uh, by the, by the providers of the ecosystem. Okay, usually, for example, device vendors or, or infrastructure owners. So we have both the two, local in, uh, integration or the cloud integration. This is something what, uh, uh, what uh, applicant needs to decide how, which approach he will use. Um, in every integration point, we are talking about some business which has a, some certain components. This is a bit more complicated. I will go to you through that. So, uh, we have uh, on this this would be technical. We have the um, uh, vicinity cloud here on the right at the top where you where we set up a peer to peer network. Then here in the middle we have the peer to peer at the edge, the communication uh, the communication network. This blue dark blue box is blue to be just provided by the project. So uh, every uh, every everyone who would like to integrate uh, his. In a infrastructure or ecosystem into vicinity will get provided the source code or package of the vicinity gateway API and communication, which helps you to communicate with the, uh, your, uh, to, to connect your edge to the peer to peer network so you can communicate, exchange the messages, explore the peer to peer network based on the rules, uh, based on the social net or explore the social, uh, explore the social network around you. Uh, what you need to implement inside here is a small gray box which translates only the uh, your in uh, internal technical uh, your uh, solution into common vicinity language it's not too complicated it's quite simple we'll go i will show you an example later on this is the basic basic structure so what i need to do uh, i need to have some invite to connect the vicinity I need to have some environment. Currently, we are running on a Java AJDK environment, which is running. We already tested in uh, uh, Linux, few version of the Linux, Ubuntu, I guess, uh, Debian. Uh, we tried uh, w uh, several times on Windows, so it should work on Windows as well, and uh, on the MacBooks for development, for example. But uh, it, um, it should work. If you have a J uh, Java AJDK environment, it should work definitely. And uh, you need to just implement this uh, configure stuff and, uh, and implement uh, this vicinity adapter. I will show you what they need to do. Uh, with the configuration part, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, with the control part, we can help anyway. So from the steps, we have uh, five steps for you. We will need to follow throughout the successful applicant who needs to, uh, who needs to follow uh, through the integration process. It's very obvious. And um, uh, the winner of the open call, any other, even our partners in a, in a project or external partners who are joining the, the vicinity but needs to follow these five steps, which are quite easy, uh, it's quite simple. The first is to analyze the vicinity APIs. It's very really simple. Then describe the devices in a vicinity conformer. I'll show you, uh, show you, uh, show you an example. 
Uh, it's uh, for techy uh, savvy people. It's really simple JSON, uh, one JSON per device. Um, implement and integrate the vicinity adapter, okay, and uh, connect the real device. So this is one of the one of uh, one of the uh, I would say the, uh, need that we would like to have in a, in the open core as well the real devices. So not just the simulators, and then demonstrate the accessibility. Run a really simple test case. I will show you. So for the analysis, currently what is available even uh, during the writing of open call, uh, we already have the vicinity gateway API, which is the first 0 0.0 version. We're just currently building a new version uh, right now, which will be available at month 30. But uh, I think for uh, for the writing high quality proposal, it is enough. There are not too much changes, but some details which we really need to finalize. Then uh, we have a uh, adapter API, which is the API you, you, you will need to comply uh, comply when you write in the adapters. I will show you the, the in a glance this API, the current version. And um, al already we have already uh, four adapters uh, written. Some still uh, next adapters are um, in, in the backlog. We already created the vicinity adapter for Cura uh, IoT technology, that for the LinkSmart, for the Cybert and IoTVT. I think uh, uh, if you, uh, I think in a, in the meantime we will have some open hub, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there will be uh, some other examples which we can reuse and find that it's quite simple uh, to implement any adapter. Because the, the critical point is that you need to know your own and uh, your own technology, and that's for you will be really simple. So let's have a look um, uh, how how you need to specify. This is techy savvy. I don't want to scare you. It's really simple. This is a description of um, of the uh, AVAC uh, air condition unit. Uh, in is a very really simple JSON, uh, which describes um, particularly uh, one service to on and off, and uh, 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 one service to uh, to measure a temperature. Uh, the structure is defined, so it's, uh, we have a schema for that for valid entity, so that's another problem, and it's explained uh, in the documentation. But basically, you will define the, this is the action definition, you will provide uh, services where the, the vicinity or the other partners get turned on of uh, the devices, which is on the, on the, on the adapter side. And um, as well, you, 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 will pro, uh, you need to, you need to pro, uh, set up here the, uh, the endpoints where, where, uh, where the partners uh, from the peer-to-peer -peer network based on the route uh, and, and, uh, can read, the, for example, the property, in this case, a temperature, ambient temperature of the air conditioned unit in your household. And, and that's it. This is the very really simple description. When you, when you dig a bit uh, deeper in, a, in, a, in the adapter API, you will see it's really, really simple. Uh, yeah, then you need to implement something finally. So when you have the, you need to implement it. This is example, um, I will show you that uh, on, on the adapter, it, what you need to implement really depends what you want to provide to, to the vicinity or enable to see the vicinity. We have three more, more or less three main concepts, and it's the providing a property. So, for example, as I showed you before, to providing a, a, a ambient temperature of um, air conditioning unit. In that case, you need to provide one simple REST a, uh, REST uh, HTTP uh, REST service when you can someone can read uh, actual value of uh, of a particular particular uh, HVAC unit. And um, if you would like to provide an action turning off. It's a bit more tricky, but you need to have implement another two services, and in case of events, another two uh, another two services as uh, again. This is roughly, I would say, about the complexity. Of course, the uh, event mechanism uh, is more complex than uh, than properties, but it's just a software implementation work. It's not really rocket science from the implementation point of uh, from the adaptive point of implementation. Uh, I will switch for a while, and I, I will, can show you the. Uh, the adapter. I hope you can see the Swagger, which I already uh, already presented uh, in a list of available Swaggers. So here is you, you can see the uh, the adapter API, which is uh, really simple. And um, for example, currently here is the innovation. We have a consumption service. Consumption services are the services when when you you provide access to the others. Okay, and this needs to be implemented. So that uh, someone from the P2P network in a controlled manner 
based on security or sharing rules you define in a in a in a peer to peer network in the so, uh, in the social uh, social network um, they can read the values and actually if i would like to for example read temperature i would try to try it out and see for example if i would like to read a value of um, of energy consumption energy for some smart plug i need to provide in a such a on the adapter i'm calling uh, i'm calling uh, i'm calling on your adapter so your adapter needs to provide uh, the specific url which is the object uh, a, a specific identifier of the object which you will receive during the registration of the device and um, a property and that's it uh, you need to respond to a simple query which is uh, i would say the execute with, with the simple query and the uh, response is very simple you will provide just the value bam and that's it it's really really simple if you would like to provide for example just the property okay uh from the security point of view uh what, what is it? you don't need to take uh, you just only need to take care about your infrastructure level security so the security the connectivity to to the vicinity gateway api and that's it uh because on, um, the security on the level of the devices is taken care by the peer-to-peer -peer network. So, for example, if if you expose your uh, your device to the vicinity, and you will not provide any, uh, uh, I would say the uh, uh, rule, you you you're not provide access to anyone. The peer-to-peer -peer network will not even allow to search your device. Uh, not allow even the query and send the query to to your gateway uh, to your adapter. So this is handled on the level of uh, level of the peer to peer network. As well from the secu uh, secu so from the security point of view, I would just mention that even the uh, the peer to uh, end to end connection or end to end encryption, I would say, between the infrastructure is handled by the peer to peer network. You just need to do some so basic setups, like uh, uh, basic setups, but uh, we as well uh, we as well for, uh, secure your connection between the adapters, uh, connection between the adapters. That's it. Uh, which is important as well when I'm talking about translating information between adapters, as um, uh, as Christopher mentioned in his previous presentation, that we are not. Uh, uh, we are not storing data in the cloud. So there is a really P2P connectivity and um, we are translating messages between the adapters. So we are not storing anything in the cloud infrastructure. Only what we store, to, to, to be honest with you, what we only store here is your user account or some, some administrating the, the P2P in the cloud. So we need to have a username and password, et cetera. And then uh, these descriptions of devices. So what is st stored here is available in the cloud. The rest, the real data are transmitted in a P2P network. Okay, so this was the implementation. Then the next step when you are ready with the implementing, what do you need to do? You, we need to start to integrate it and connecting all things together. What we can help you, what we can help you is the taking care about your infrastructure. That, this is what we can do. Uh, you, 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 need to, uh, you need to take care about connecting your device to your ecosystem, which I think is really obvious. However, from that point of view, uh, that, from that margin, the border, we can help you. We can help you to, during the project to set up uh, the, the, uh, the vicinity connectivity uh, around the Gateway API. You have your, we'll provide you with the, with the guidelines, with the unit, but there will be some support. Don't, don't be afraid. And as well to basically how to configure your your IoT ecosystems, we are providing this uh, the, the, this this uh, this support right now just because um, even we finish the implementation, we need to work as well on the documenting, and this will take some time to document everything, every 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 aspect of uh, the the whole vicinity. So don't be afraid; you will not be alone in the project. We'll help you. Um, it will stop your team, that I would say. And when you are connected, and uh, the last step, what we need to do is really simple, is to uh, uh, validate that uh, you are you you manage to get 
your devices, your ecosystems, uh, your ecosystem into the vicinity. And that's really simple through the really simple test scenario, which is, for example, if I will provide uh, 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 for my smart fridges or my water heaters, my PVs uh, or my electric car or whatsoever, or my smart meters, I will provide um, access to, to, to certain properties of these devices. We will run, uh, um, uh, you will need to run, you will need to run a test scenario uh, how, where, we, where we test if this connect communication really works from the point of peer-to-peer -peer network. Okay, uh, if you provide uh, um, properties and some actions, so you can turn, uh, you can decrease a temperature on a uh, air condition. You can, uh, uh, or, or someone from the outside can uh, have access um, uh, to, oh sorry, to turn off uh, a fridge or the light or, or whatsoever. Then we need to test this as well. So the complexity of the, the testing is is based on the how much services you integrate. Basically, to sum up, uh, in the maximum scenario, you need to implement uh, in, uh, you need to implement a services for a registration, which is really simple get message, and then one service for the all if you are writing properties two services and two or three services for 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 more or less about the adapters and and events. Uh, don't quote me on that on the numbers because it can be a change one service up and down uh, by because we are in, uh, finalizing implementation of API sometimes uh, uh, sometimes things popped up but it's not like uh, several times more so that's it that's that's uh, all from my side uh, from this presentation we went through the main five steps which is to analyze the API which you have a plenty of the time throughout the preparing the open call and as well sometimes to um, um, during the implementation of the project. The second step uh, is, to, is to provide uh, thing descriptions or the device descriptions uh, for every device. You can do it generated or you can do it manually. And um, uh, thir a third step is to actually implement something, um, to implement necessary services for your adapter. Uh, last step, uh, oh, not really last, the fourth we will be just uh, to, to connect devices and start to integrate things all to get, uh, together. And the last one is the testing, and that's it. It's a really simple integration project. From, ex uh, from experience of our uh, partners, uh, which are already went through this um, um, integration project uh, throughout, the, uh, uh, throughout the, uh, integrating the demonstration for the review, for example, for the, or, or the last general assembly, it's uh, it's a matter of the days, I would say. Depends on the skill and uh, and uh, and the support, of course. But it's not like uh, I would say the six months of implementation work. Definitely not. So, Carmen. Um, in the meantime, if you don't see the on the bottom, we have the slider. If just uh, send out a question, uh, Carmen. I think uh, floor is yours. Oh. Okay. Thank you very much, Victor, for your presentation. I would like to ask the participant to ask questions through a slide. Remind the, the hash is K154. Uh, any question to Victor? I am not seeing question. Okay, if you don't have question, yes, we have uh, some question. It's about the timeline of the call. Don't worry, I am going to explain this uh, in my presentation. Yes, this is my question. Okay, I, I will answer. Uh, thank you. The uh, second question is good. Good. Do you have um, um, any requirement for the size of the test scenario? Um, as I say, um, uh, it needs to be mm, uh, not particular writing right now, but um, uh, definitely it's a normal software work. I would say so. Um, uh, complexity needs to be or, or number of the uh, uh, scenarios uh, per service. Uh, um uh, uh good cases wrong cases error handling so really really simple thing um 
we we are running uh, uh, if uh, you, the actually actually I would say that it really depends on your infrastructure and of your needs. Um, if you have infrastructure where you pose that you need to have some specific uh, uh, even uh, non-functional requirements, for example, you need to do I would say uh, quote uh, quote marked uh, real time. Uh, operations and or really heavy a number of requests you need to have a look on that definitely but bear in mind it is the research project so um, uh, 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 we can assess that definitely but it's different uh, really depends on the on the what you would like to provide uh, at the end of the open call uh, what is the what is your use, uh, use case what is your infrastructure Uh, I, I will try to answer the, the question we got. Okay, there's another question. Uh, do we have to connect our test scenarios to one of the existing use cases you already done? Can you introduce the existing use cases? Um, we have uh, we have more or less uh, uh, four use case uh, four use cases um, distributed around the, uh, around the Europe. Uh, uh, I think. Um, if you need, you don't need to. This is the, this is the question. I think this is uh, written in. It doesn't is necessary. It's not necessary to. Uh, 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 it's not necessary that you need to uh, be in in a sync with uh, with the with the use cases. This is something what I uh, I will say. I don't know. Karma jump in. If I'm saying something wrong, to jump in it. And um, I don't know if that should be introduced right now. The, the existing use cases come on. Uh, no, the the infrastructure doesn't have to be uh, linked to the use cases. So they could be independent. They should be independent. Then the the answer is, is no. And we have right now for. Uh, pilots in the in the vicinity project you can get more info for the pilot in the internet website of vicinity but even though if you want more information about the particular use case please uh, send us a message to the to the email of of the open call and we can provide this information through through the question and answer uh, section on the website. I will put the address in my presentation too, right now. Thank you. More questions? Well, uh, I have to say that the pilots are in health, uh, transport, parking, smart parking, energy, and smart buildings. But uh, I will say this too in my presentation too. We are looking for a, a IT infrastructure in every do in in all domains. We are not closest to one domain in particular. Okay. Uh, we have a question that how are you going to select the cases? I assume you will finance a limited number of cases. Well, uh, uh, this is a, will we uh, score all the proposal and will we rank it, the proposal? And the idea is to fund funding uh, around, no, around four proposals will be funding. Then uh, the, the four better proposal, the proposal with the higher, uh, highest uh, 
score will be uh, funding. Okay, if I may, um, there is another another question which is uh, regarding uh, uh, the smart mobility, where it is uh, whether it is uh, required to IoT solution for connected uh, vehicle vehicle communication. Is there existing use case for that? Uh, actually, uh, we do not have vehicle to vehicle communication in uh, in our pilot site. This is the. Uh, uh, as as Karma said regarding the the use cases why we are going to implement uh, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a vicinity project, uh, uh, you can, you can find it in a, in a, our web page. That's uh, that's uh, uh, that's the best place. So you can even see the possible synergies there. Or um, of course, this is this is not which is not covered by any use cases currently implemented in the project, but. That's what, all we can say. Uh, another last question. Um, yeah, there is a, uh, when you say infrastructure, do you mean devices uh, already deployed, commercialized? How large do you expect the infrastructure to be? So, um, uh, Okay, if I'm talking about the infrastructure, I usually um, it may be, it is, it is perfect. If we, uh, I think for, for the vicinity, it's really, really perfect. If, um, if we provide, uh, uh, if the connection is, um, or, or the infrastructure integrated is already deployed devices or even a commercialized devices. In that case, we 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 connect vicinity real life uh, uh, real life infrastructure. This is okay. It's not a problem. Um, um, uh, of course, even uh, even the experimental technologies and experimental devices are really really welcome. Um, uh, what we are expecting? What we are expecting? Um, uh, in a vicinity project, I don't. I don't want to say what we are explaining in a, in an open call, but uh, but um, uh, um, um, in a vicinity project, we usually, for example, in a pilot in use cases, we connect in the devices from uh, one or two per uh, per location, for example, for per households, five ten per households, or we have a larger pilot site, for example, in the Greece, where we have uh, uh, we will have a tens. Uh, tent um, of uh, of devices connected uh, in in the in the pilot site. This is uh, this is uh, this is more or less the, uh, roughly what we are implementing in the, in the vicinity. I will answer the I will answer the question. Uh, who will run and maintain the cloud after the project period ends? I will say that you have to provide this information in the in the proposal. Uh, yeah. The idea, yes, if it, it is regarding the the project, the proposal you are presenting, uh, you have to provide this information after in your proposal. But can I think the question targets uh, the vicinity cloud, maybe? Yeah, because um, okay. uh, for yes. uh, house projects, we um, expect that within the runtime, um, of course, you guarantee that your infrastructure will be uh, will be alive. And as an impact, we expect that there's something um, remains, but we don't expect you uh, to provide uh, really support for eternity for the things that you created. But we expect some sustainable impact. And the vicinity cloud, um, of course, we have um, 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 foreseen that there will be um, maintenance for the vicinity cloud even after the um, project ends. Okay. So we have um, so far um, two um, 
SME within um, the vicinity projects um, that plan to provide support even after the project ended. Uh, we are in, in uh, investigation to continue also um, other research projects to, to get further funding for vicinity. So there is a lot going on to guarantee that we can guarantee that um, um, vicinity will um, be supported even after the end of this project. I think that is uh, guaranteed for sure, even as of now. Okay, uh, the following question is to say, what do you plan for your next open call? Uh, what kind of appliance? Okay, for the next open call, uh, we are uh, planning to ask for value-added services uh, built upon vicinity. And we think that we will have the open call uh, at the, it, it will start at the end of this uh, this year, uh, in order to be able to start the project at the beginning of the following year, 2019. Yeah, are there other questions from the audience? I see only five questions or three questions, and uh, here are uh, Above 30 um, participants, uh, participants, don't hesitate to ask questions now. We have a lot of uh, relevant uh, vicinity uh, developers here and um, feel free to ask any question uh, that you have. Okay, so, so another two questions I see in the slide is, um, is it possible to test in a, in a, in a laboratory? Uh, for sure, for sure it is, it is possible to test in a laboratory. Um, uh, we have an environment where you can uh, test your integration of the adapters and um, uh, you can have uh, a laboratory uh, laboratory test cases uh, definite, uh, running the test, test cases in laboratories it's, it's obvious it's okay it's not a problem uh, a second question is um, uh, can we create a new use case or shall we complement to existing one um, I think that this is this is free. You can do uh, both uh, in both ways. Uh, the the important thing is you uh, when you provide your use case, you are able to get a very good score in the four uh, different categories you, we have for the evaluation, but we are not close to complement or we are not close to have new use cases. The idea is to have very good proposals. Uh, that is the main idea of this. We are not close to, to nothing because maybe if you are going to have a very big impact in complementing a, a use case, that is welcome. And if you are going to have a very high impact uh, with a new use case, that is welcome too. Yeah, I, I must also, um, um, I see here we have um, also a question um, that is not yet answered. And that is um, whether we shall, um, or we, that means a participant shall create a new use case or shall the participant um, complement an existing one. I must say that um, the first open call targets infrastructures. These infrastructures um, can be um, um, open, let's say, uh, vicinity for new use cases, but it can as well um, complement existing ones. I think so that is open. Um, I see another question here about um, um, the infrastructure uh, communication technology that is accepted, whether it shall be SIGP or whatever. I think uh, we are totally open here. If you bring in your new infrastructures, you may, might um, bring in, for example, Zigbee. Currently, we have Zigbee supported via um, some of the IoT um, um, gateway platforms that is supported. If you take another way, that's totally left to you. Whatever you want to bring in, in the end, you will have to create an adapter 
that brings it into the cloud. It's your infrastructure, you decide what to use here. Exactly. If I can, if I can jump in, oh, sorry, Christoph, you, you, you are correct. You are completely correct, but I would like to bear one thing in mind. Then um, when I was talking about the integration points, if it is cloud or the local, and from the example, you can see that we are providing um, the adapter communicating with the vicinity peer-to-peer -peer network in the simplest way is called, uh, using a REST, uh, REST HTTP protocol. Um, and um, if, if your uh, your devices are running on the BLE or ZigBee or whatsoever, it's not a problem, but bear in mind that, that the adapter needs to go through this uh, low level technical protocols up to the high levels protocols. This is what you need to implement. So, so the implementation layer, this is, this is it. Basically, um, um, the, the COVID call should be uh, understood in a very open way. So it, there should be really no strong limitations. If you have a creative idea that will help to increase the impact and usefulness of vicinity, and that is, can be understood as some infrastructure on top of which someone else or vicinity can create some interesting value added services in the future. Propose it. Yeah, we are very open. Okay, the I will re-answer the question. Yes, there will be four projects. That is that's the idea. because uh, someone said that the, he lost the connection, there will be a uh, fourth project. I think uh, uh, we should go for the following uh, presentation. We can continue with the question and answer later. If I may, so, yes. sorry, can I sorry, jump in? Just, just uh, uh, there was a one, uh, one, a really quick, uh, quick, uh, uh, quick answer for the question for Fiverr. Uh, we are planning to prepare one, uh, one adapter uh, for for the Fiverr. So uh, in in the future in the project. So we're still broadening the the, the uh, supported uh, supported infrastructures and fiber fiber we will try to implement an adapter for that as well in the in the, in the vicinity. And sorry sorry for jumping. The floor is yours. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes. No. Yeah. You see my screen. Okay. Well, uh, I insist uh, we are. Uh, getting question with slido.com with the has K154 in order to remind you. Okay. Uh, I am going to continue with my presentation. As I said before, I am Carmen Perea from Atos. Uh, I am going to divide this talk into four parts. First of all, I will provide you some important information about the open call. Then I will explain you how to apply to the open call. And after this, I will explain the evaluation process and some, some tips about IPR management. Okay, the open call in a nutshell. Well, we are asking for new IoT infrastructure and we will fund the project with up to 60,000 euros per project. The expected duration of the project is six months. The open call started last 15 of March 2018, and we will finish the open call on the 15th of June, uh, 17, uh, 17 uh, the time is 17 in Brussels time. It is foreseen that the project will start on October. Uh, 2018, and I will repeat, the idea is to, to
to fund around four projects. Okay. This uh, slide shows us the open call in a visual way. The open call is open on the 15th of March. Uh, it will close in the 15th of June. We have this time for proposals. The evaluation uh, will take place from June to the end of July. Okay. And the idea is to uh, publish the list of the of winners at the end of July, 1st of August, and we will start the negotiation with the winners uh, during the summertime. And the idea is to uh, that the project, uh, the new project, will start on October. Uh, who can apply? What type of participants are allowed with in this open call? Well, are the same participants of the uh, in the Horizon 2020 program? Uh, the idea is that only one organization can participate in each proposal, and we can receive a proposal from individual SMEs, large companies, research institutes, universities, public authorities, and from European member states or associated countries to the program Horizon 2020. And only one organization should be submit the proposal. Okay, as Victor said in his presentation, a proposal must integrate a new IoT infrastructure into vicinity, should cooperate with the vicinity partners to demonstrate the open call project results, and shall explain how the IoT infrastructure support existing use cases, services, and or business model in vicinity or new ones and or undertake co-creation activities. Uh, what type of infrastructures are we looking, looking for? As we said uh, before, we are open to all kinds of domains energy, smart energy, smart home, smart building, cities, agriculture, but we are open to any kind of domain. This is not restricted for us. Okay, that's only examples. We are open to any domain infrastructure. Uh, again, I would like to remind you that the vicinity documentation is on the on the website you can see in this uh, url the documentation at the moment we have the press release the guidelines the technical guidelines the f6s walkthrough the evaluation criteria the template for the deliverables and the work package the extension of the contract this is the document you have to sign with the vicinity a consortium and the open call brochure. In this uh, address on the website, we all, we have two the question and answer sections in which we are going to publish all the questions we will uh, answer you through the through the open call. In order to guarantee the transparency, we are going to upload all the all the questions. Well, uh, let me interrupt the presentation in order to say you that right now we have opened another poll. Okay. Well, how to apply? Uh, we have used this platform F6S. I imagine that some of you uh, know this platform because it has been used for a lot of uh, Horizon 2020 projects. For example, some of the IoT API projects uh, uh, have used this uh, platform. This platform uh, allows the participant register. The, it has the option of autosave, and it has also the option of create a team. Team options too. Okay. 
Uh, we have a split the the form in F six uh, S in seven sections. Uh, in the section A, we are asking for basic info about you. Uh, you should provide information about your organization, also a draft of the proposal should be provided in this section. Okay, in section B, uh, we have benefit of IoT infrastructure for vicinity, and you should explain carefully how your infrastructure is going to provide benefit to vicinity. You could provide a new use case that can attract a lot of stakeholders. Also, if you show that you have a community behind you, this will be very relevant for vicinity. For that reason, we have asked it in this session for letters of interest in order you to show us uh, how you are getting community around your project. Okay, in section three, we have the long-term impact and we want you to show us how your infrastructure is going to provide long-term impact to vicinity. Will the infrastructure be available at the end of the project? Will the infrastructure be maintained uh, after the project? Describe how your infrastructure is what it's going to provide new business model to vicinity. For the section D, excellent and soundness, uh, this section used to just declare the clarity of the problem and the solution, the novelty, the soundness of the solution, and how you are going to manage the sensitive data. Uh, what problems are solved by the proposal? What innovation is provided? How is the technical plan? In the section E, we have a devoted session for data management, and you should explain how you're going to manage the sensitive data and how you are complying with the uh, complying, sorry, with the EUI legislation. For in section F, we are going to adjust the capability of the proposal, the technical and logical capability, the the curriculum for the participant, you have to pro provide a technical diagram, the te diagram for your architecture, for your infrastructure. Uh, you have to provide the work package, the, deliverable, the deliverables and the Gantt chart. In, in some template, templates, we have provided you on the website. And the deliverables should contain at least information about uh, the test planning, the test implementation, the data management plan, the technical um, and management uh, content, the exploitation and business, and at least you should provide two reports, the interim report and the final report. Okay, and for, sorry, uh, the last uh, section, is the, the G, the miscellaneous, in which we are getting information about, about how do you see the, the open call of vicinity. Well, uh, we would like to ask you to, to watch out that there are limits in the, in the text box. You have to watch out this. For example, there are limits in the, in the site of the file you are uploading in the F6S system. We ask you to uh, provide PDF files and watch out the limited of page indicated. Well, the evaluation criteria, I should uh, encourage you to, to review carefully the evaluation criteria and check it this uh, and check it this in the in the website we have uh, uploaded the evaluation criteria there and uh, all the sections uh, we have four sections and all the sections have the same weight but you should observe the threshold because you have to get 12 
uh, over 20 in each section. We have a split the evaluation criteria in four, benefit for vicinity, long-term impact, excellent and soundness, and capability of the proposer. As you see, the evaluation criteria is very linked with the form we had posed in the in the F6S uh, system. Then uh, we'll uh, advise you to revise the, the evaluation criteria carefully and try to answer all the questions because uh, the four uh, sections have the same score. Okay. And regarding the evaluation process, uh, we have um, um, organized the evaluation process as, as follows. Each proposal will be checked or will be evaluated by two evaluators. Okay. They will provide two evaluation reports separately. Evaluation report one report two and then they will have a consensus meeting in which they had discussed the score and agree on the consensus uh, report then at the end the proposer will see this uh, last uh, report the consensus report in which will we provide the the score to the participants we will send the evaluation report to all participants and with this score, we will um, create the ranked uh, proposal. Okay. Regarding the payments, I have to say that uh, this um, uh, information is contained in the extension contract, and we will uh, provide the 40 percent percent of the of the payment after the signature of the agreement of collaboration the 30 percent of the overall financial support uh, will be provided after the evaluation by the vicinity consortium of the intermediate report as i say it should be a mandatory deliverable the intermediate report and the 30 percent of the overall financial support will be provided uh, when the consortium evaluate the final report. Okay. Then some points regarding the IPR management. Uh, the results are owned by the party or by the vicinity beneficiary that generates them. Joint results shall be jointly owned by the partners in equal shares at least differently agreed by the contributors. The asset right to the background uh, will be provided only if it is needed for the implementation of the extension. Okay, that is the vision I want to give you. I want to say thank you, all of you, for your attention. And uh, as I say, here in this uh, URL, you have the, all the content of the open call. We have opened this email, opencalls at vicinity2020.eu, in which you can uh, ask to ask questions. And we will upload all the questions answered to the website. Uh, free, feel free to contact us by, by Twitter in, the, in this, at vicinity2020 and on LinkedIn. Uh, thank you very much all of you for, for, your, for your time, for, uh, for the question. And as I can see, I think we have more questions to answer. OK, uh, let's, let's see. OK, thank you, Kam. Um, before we start with um, uh, questions, yeah, I must uh, answer a uh, misunderstanding. Um, there was a misunderstanding regarding vehicle um, or uh, mobility uh, value-added services or mobility um, infrastructures um, in a car-to-car -car, uh, use case. I don't have a question and response here now. Um, 
we are open to all, principally all use cases. That in particular also includes mobility use cases. The only limitations that you will have are the um, evaluation criteria. The evaluation criteria were mentioned by Carmen. And let me remind you, this is only and only the benefit for vicinity, that is the long-term impact um, of the infrastructure that you propose, the excellence in the scientific sense and the capability of the proposer to implement this. Dot. There is nothing else. There is only this and, of course, that it is some infrastructure in the meaning of the call. But apart from that, we are totally open to everything you want to propose. So I think that was clear. The next question I would like to address was uh, the, the question regarding uh, nodes have to be connected to platform permanently or they can be running on a mobile device with limited connectivity. I will ask for that uh, nodes do not need to be permanently uh, connected. They can have a limit access to connectivity. Um, uh, when you walk through the even through the specifications of, of the vicinity, currently in this version, we are running the P2P network running on these XMPP servers. So this is not a problem. There is a messaging mechanism for that. If you are offline, online, the nodes are offline, online. It's not a problem. And as I stated in the presentation, uh, we have uh, a current requirement for running this vicinity node is uh, Java 8 JDK. This is a safe environment uh, which needs to be followed. Okay, other questions? I think um, uh, the fact that we have in the end 240,000 euro or 250,000 plus minus for the first call also answers also the um, question uh, regarding how many um, uh, proposals can be funded. So we have 240, 50,000 euros. So, um, Depending on the cost, we will spend this money uh, to fund as many uh, proposals as um, there are uh, uh, possible within this amount of money. So if it's uh, 60,000, we will be able to, to fund four projects in the end. Maybe more. So, are there other questions from the audience? I see no. I see no other questions. Carmen, Victor, is there something else open from the audience? Uh, yes, that we are encouraged you to participate in the open call, and we are uh, looking forward to to getting your proposals. And we are looking forward for another questions through the Q&A, uh, through the whole open call open. Yeah. If you have a spontaneous question, you have currently no um, um, question via um, the web, so but you can also ask uh, now directly. We will we'll, uh, upload the the question answers to the to the website. I I think for the at the end of this week, and we will continue you to uh, in contact with you with using the media, the email uh, address, and please 
as as whatever you you need to be uh, clarified by the consortium. Yeah, there seem to be no other questions. So I hope everything is clear. Feel free to contact us. In case you have uh, any questions, just contact us. We are happy if you get uh, your proposal. Carmen, some last words from your side? Uh, thank you again, all of you, to the vicinity consortium, to the participants, and uh, let's go. And for some a lot of proposals. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Please contact us in whatever you you want. Okay. Bye-bye. And follow us on Twitter. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And follow us on Twitter. Thank you. Mm -hmm.